was not coming. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, April 3rd meeting of the Weathersfield Town, the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Rich, would you help us with the uh, roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. Here. Vice Chairman Margiata is not here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes is not here. Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Mr. Hamicki. Here. Mr. Dean was here. Uh, Mr. Allard, not here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak is not here. Mr. Silver. Here. All right, so there are eight of us. Everybody's participating this evening. First item on the agenda uh, is a public hearing, item 3.1. It's an application 1975-18-Z, Thomas S. and uh, Gazelda Forst, seeking a one-lot re-subdivision at 247 Griswold Road. Would you join us at the microphone if the applicant is here? All right. Uh, for those of you who are here tonight to uh, potentially participate in a public hearing, uh, we'll let the applicant uh, talk to us. We will then ask questions of the applicant when we feel comfortable that we've got everything we want to know for the moment. We will turn around and ask the public for their input on the application. Uh, then we will call the application back. We will continue the dialogue. If at some point the commission feels that we have adequately covered the, the issue and we have the answers to the questions, we can move to close the hearing and then we can move on to uh, consider what we will do with the application. That's the process, alrighty? So if you'll bear with us, we'll start with the applicant and if you would uh, identify yourself and then uh, summarize what's going on. My name is Chris Zabidio with Close Jensen Miller. With me is Kevin Johnson from Close Jensen Miller. And we're here tonight for this one lot subdivision. The property is located on Griswold Road, approximately across from the turf farm, uh, slightly north of Highland Street. It's on the west side of, of the street. Um, this is a A1 residential zone. And the property is approximately an acre in size, a little bit more. And we're looking to subdivide that into two pieces, one slightly larger than half an acre, the other one slightly smaller than half an acre. Uh, these do meet the requirements for the zone. And um, the lots will both be served by public utilities. And uh, it's the highlights of it. Right. Should be pretty straightforward, right? Our gen Folks, uh, questions to the applicant? The question is to Peter. Do um, you have a couple memos, Peter, that uh, oh. had the town engineer had some extensive uh, 23 bullets? Can I speak to that? We, we I, would, I would prefer the applicant to respond to those, okay. yep. We reviewed the comments. Uh, we're in agreement with the majority of them. The only comment that, um, comments, I should say, that we would like to discuss with you are items three and four that have to do with the uh, concrete walk in the front and the concrete sidewalk. Um, town engineer's comments refer to the grade of the sidewalk. When we looked at that in regards to the driveway crossing that sidewalk, to raise the driveway to the height where we would not have to regrade all of that sidewalk would make the driveway too steep at the apron. To put it at the elevation we put it at, and to regrade it at the 5% that uh, Derek is requesting would push that ex uh, new sidewalk construction 60 or so some odd feet to the north, which would put it into the root zone of that uh, town-owned maple tree there. So our decision was to mitigate that by making this roughly a 8% grade, a 1 in 12 um, in front of the house to try and lessen all of these impacts by all this regrading of sidewalk. 
everything else is pretty much straightforward and not an issue. Um, just for the record, there were there were two memos. So what he's referring to is a um, a memo from the town engineer to Peter and to us, in, in which there are 23 specific comments on the plans to uh, to address. And so your reference was to number four. Um, Peter, your memo to us uh, is simply indicating the the sizes and everything. It doesn't specifically, if I'm reading it correctly, identify a problem that you foresee or anything. No, my memo came after the town engineer's uh, comments, so I think he covered uh, some of the other technical uh, com comments that I might normally uh, cover, so I didn't want to be redundant. Um, basically, my memo is, you know, here's the existing zoning requirements, and as laid out, the uh, lots meet the uh, requirements of the underlying zone. So, okay. um, Chris, did you ch talk to the town engineer about uh, those comments, the ones that you you didn't necessarily agree with him on? Not since we received his memo. We only got it on Thursday, and, you know, as we were aware, Friday was a holiday here in town. And no. so, so the stairs that are out front between the uh, sidewalk and the curb, those that's okay. You'll, you agree to take that out, right? We would prefer not to because that also impacts that grading, but uh, if that were your wishes, then we could do that. If you take that sidewalk out, it has a little bit of play with the whole arrangement of the walks that are there. If we were going to take it all out, all the way back to that maple tree, then it's less of an issue. But if we leave it the way we have it graded, currently taking it out would make for a steep step off towards the street. We just as soon leave it if we can. All right. I can't honestly say that I, that I visited the site to look at these comments. I mean, I have a vague recollection of what I thought it was referring to. So um, if we get down that path, I'm going to leave it up to the engineer to, to work out with you guys. Um, questions? The applicant? Yeah, I guess my thought is that if the concrete stairs are on town property and have been identified as a potential liability, we probably ought to support the town engineer's request to remove them. And and when I hear about the grade of the sidewalk, you know, I, I realize that the, the lay of the land often dictates just how flat you can make sidewalks, right, uh, without chasing it forever and ever. Um, ADA rules aside, there are just some places that you just can't make it work. So um, the, grade of the, the grade of the sidewalk didn't necessarily concern me if you can't make it work. It sounded like you tried to make it a little better. The sidewalk coming out to the curb, the step down, I assume it's like a step down, right? From the, from the sidewalk up, up above to the curb down below. If you were to look at it right now without the proposed driveway for the lot that would contain the existing house, yep. the driveway for the property now is the one on the southern part where the lot split is to take place. So okay. they would maintain that current curb cut. The new curb cut, in order not to exceed 10% coming in from the street, has to lower the grade there, which is what causes this grading issue. Yeah. So, our, like I mentioned, our decision was to hold it at 1 in 12 and bring it back to roughly that uh, concrete walk that exists, that concrete stair that exists now. If we were to go 5%, we would carry it another 30 feet beyond that, and that's where we felt we were getting into trouble with this other tree. And the town engineer's comments in another part of the memo, he refers to that very same issue with the 18-inch tree down in front of the new lot. So it was one of these, okay, we're trying not to do exactly what he's asking for on this other tree with this tree. Tom? Oh, I'm sorry, George. I thought it was Tom saying that was up. So I understand this, and I didn't go over there and inspect it like I always do most of these things. <laughs> I'm wondering why you can't take it out to the driveway. Why does it have to extend out to the street, the sidewalk, and step on the town property? Those aren't proposed, George. Those are existing. Those are existing. Oh, okay. I'm looking at the I'm sorry. Are, are there any, any rules about uh, where the driveway, in other words, the driveway on the, that, you're, that you're proposing on the north lot where the existing home is, um, I guess I always thought there were some rules about extending the property in general, line. In general, the rule of thumb is not as well as stand close on the way. The rule of thumb is driveway should not encroach unnecessarily in front of the water drain. Mm. And there are occasions 
chair and legislature when that does happen, but for the most part it doesn't. And so trying not to do exactly that, we brought this driveway straight down basically perpendicular to the existing street line. This is that concrete uh, walk we refer to, and this is where we graded our intersect to. And like I said, we lowered this to 5% of the green area back to here. That's pretty much what we do now. And the, and the tree is right under your fingertip, right? Yeah. Now, in one of uh, Mr. Rigger's comments, he refers to his head portion. We're going to have to swing this driveway over a little bit to avoid converting that, uh, as his memo suggests. We really don't want to turn this into a manhole and add another head portion to the street. So we're going to have to angle it slightly over here to avoid that as it is. So that's still going to put it in front of that perpendicular line drawn on the street from that mm -hmm. property. And you, Anything more than that really puts an odd angle in at the walk coming off the street. Yeah, and, and might not even fit on the property, right? <laughs> this part here that we're all in this discussion about is all in the town's right of way. Right. Yep. Other questions, or should we just open it up to the public? Is there anybody here from the public that would like to uh, comment on, on this particular application? Okay. There is? Oh, thank you. If you would uh, yield the microphone, thank you. <coughs> I'll make it very brief. Peter Brzezicki, 239 Griswold Road. I'm the abutting neighbor to the north of the property and um, from what I understand of the plan, I have no problem with it. Shouldn't bother us at all. Thank all right. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else like to comment? Okay. Come on back up. Last call. Questions, Peter. Uh, Tony. We have a. Um, can't, can't, isn't he allowed a one lot split with this type of a parcel? Why is, is this a. Uh, Part of a subdivision previously? Uh, potentially something like this is allowed a one lot split, but based on the research or the history of the property, there had been previous cuts from it. So um, once it gets to the third parcel, it uh, is defined as a resubdivision. So that's a short answer for that. Good answer for that. Thank you. <laughs> could, could, I'd just like it if the applicant could explain again what happens specifically to what size tree if the switch in the steps is done that was discussed earlier? Yeah, what happens now, Mr. Chair? How, how big is the tree? How old is the tree? Uh, the tree is a 30-inch maple. I have no idea how old it is. Uh, the concern is whenever you excavate in the area of a tree, the what they call critical root zone can be impacted by construction. Most of these trees, like a maple, have a very shallow root system. So if we start cutting into that, it can affect tree's health. And that, that tree is actually in the town right of way? town's tree. <coughs> Tom? Um, just a bit of clarification. It, it sounds as like your, your objections to numbers three and four of the town engineer's recommendations basically boiled down to uh, you know, ecological concerns uh, regarding the preservation of uh, flora, namely the trees that might be impacted. Is that a correct uh, assumption? I would say it's a combination of the impact on the tree. <laughs> and <laughs> if you increase the grade of the driveway apron coming in from Griswold into the property to not have to regrade the walk, then that slope of that driveway becomes something in the neighborhood of 15%. And that is way too steep. This is dragging your bumper around the road as you turn into your driveway. Now, as it is, we have to turn that apron a little bit more than we would have preferred to avoid the catch basin. So this combination, if you're heading south, of turning in at a sharper than a 90 degree angle, plus having a steeper slope than you would want, would be far less desirable than the alternative which is to have the lower slope of the driveway and the slightly steeper sidewalk approaching the walk that enters to the house. 
Now, I can't really say that Mr. Greger was wrong to ask for 5%, but that 5% extends that construction of a new sidewalk beyond the walkway to the front door by another 25 to 30 feet, and that's where this tree is. So the tree would be impacted if that were carried out? If we did that, yes. Okay. Uh, Peter, question for you. Relating to the, you know, the engineers, town engineer's recommendations, uh, were his recommendations uh, based upon uh, engineering, uh, civil engineering principles or safety issues or, or either of the above? I, I think his comment is, is basically to try and get the sidewalk more in compliance with the town's standards. However, this is an existing condition. You've got factors such as those that have been mentioned about the tree and, you know, uh, and it is an existing condition. Uh, so it sounds like there's a willingness by the applicant's engineer to get closer to the standard, but not absolutely on the standard. So I would probably suggest that on, in that particular, on that particular condition um, that, you know, the, uh, the applicant's engineer work with the town engineer to get as close as, uh, you know, as practicable. Uh, without impacting the tree, we would certainly not want to see the tree Any compromise in effect. Yeah, so um, I can't speak for the town engineer. That's why I asked whether there had been a conversation about that. So maybe he missed, uh, you know, this particular issue regarding the tree, or didn't really <coughs> take it into consideration. So, uh, so it sounds like, you know, it can be improved, but it may not meet, you know, a, a, a traditional standard that he would normally want to meet. So. Yeah, you know, I, I concur with, with your comment about you know, the engineer and the owner getting together. Uh, but I, you know, on my side, I'd hate to impose conditions that, that just blankly applies the town engineer's recommendation uh, when there may be you know, other factors to be, to be considered that, uh, and if such were carried out, may actually result in an injustice to, to the applicant. And if you wanted to, you could keep your fingers on the condition and say if there's a, you know, an impasse that it come back to the commission for, you know, further review. Good so idea. That, that's another option. So it's not an absolute one side or the other. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm going to step out of the box for a moment. There's a lot of people here and I want to make sure that I understand what you're here to talk to um, is there are three things on the agenda tonight. Are, are, is this the one that you were here to, to hear about? And Um, so, so we do typically have public comments at the end, but it's not really under our jurisdiction. Um, would you care to offer yeah. some? You're talking about the, the utility work and the, and the stockpile site down on Elm Street? Well, we approved it. We so approved. Um, have think you think talked to the town engineer? Yeah, he did talk to me. Was it town manager? Town engineer? Town manager said he was going to take it up to the engineers. Okay. Well, we can be so, so, okay so so let's do this uh, I thank you for giving us a heads up let's finish this this application and then um, take it out of order take yeah I, I, I'm looking at how long the other ones are I don't want you sitting here all night um, we'll we'll entertain a motion to move it out of order and have public comment okay and then we'll just put it on the record all right so uh, going back going back to this issue, um, any other questions for the applicant? Uh, are we comfortable that we should be closing the public hearing? Move to close the hearing. I'll second. second. So Tom and Tony, all right. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Very good. Um, all right. Motion. I'll make a motion to approve application number 1975-18Z. For one lot sub lease subdivision at 247 Griswold Road, subject to the 26 bullets in the engineer's report, with the I want to call it a, a caveat for item number four to be uh, worked out between the town engineer uh, and the applicant. 
All right. So, so just for clarification, there are 23 comments, um, but it's items three and four, right? Which are the s stairs up and the fourth one, the longitudinal replacement of the sidewalk. Exactly. All right. So. And as I understand, the, the condition as it relates to three and four uh, would be stated kind of approximately as, as, uh, as follows, um, that uh, the applicant and the town engineer will uh, collectively work out a solution to the issues raised and those issues uh, and the applicant, and, if, and the, in the event that there's an impasse between uh, the town staff and the applicant that uh, the matter be brought back before this commission. Is that? That's the way it was presented, so yes. Okay. Thank you. Will you, caveat I mentioned. will you second it, Tom? I'll second it. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion to approve and that uh, substantial condition, those, that language. All, the, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, very good. Good luck. <clears throat> All righty. So, shall uh, we consider a motion here? Will someone make a motion? Make a motion that we take item seven public comment out of order now. Yeah. I'll second the motion. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, those of you who are here for 3 2 and 3 3, bear with us for a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So um, this is an opportunity for public comment. Uh, as uh, I was corrected, we did approve the, the plans uh, as part of this commission action. So uh, <laughs> if you'd like to offer some public comments. My name is Ed Smith from 215 Elm Street. Um, I guess last June, you guys were supposed to have met and approved this. Um, I know us and several of our other neighbors never got letters of the um, project. Only, I think, three people on the street got the letters. Um, since the project has gone, it was going, I'm going to say, smoothly in the beginning, and now they're running probably 30 trucks at a time down the road. Um, from talking to one of our neighbors, they, I guess you guys had only approved three or four trucks up to 30 or 40 times a day. But I'm counting every five minutes a truck, a tractor trailer or a triaxle going down the road. The trucks are pushing us off the road. I've actually got pushed off the road, damaged two of my vehicles, had to send them out to get alignments done, ball joints done on my trucks. Um, the trucks are going down the road about 40 miles per hour. I'm going to guess because <coughs> having been a truck driver myself, listen to their gear ranges, they're automatically in fourth gear, going by the gears. Um, I've tried talking to the project manager that down there, John Malone. He's corrected some of the issues, but not all. The trucks are going down the road at 6.30 in the morning, idling in front of our houses until 7 o'clock when they start getting loaded up. Um, one of our neighbors here also lives right next door. Her house gets filled up with the exhaust fumes from the loader early in the morning. Um, I have several issues with this. Um, like I said, the exhaust brakes are going down. I work nights, so I try to sleep during the daytime. I also have a 14-month-old that tries to take her naps and not be disturbed early in the morning. It's very frustrating when she gets woken up by the trucks going down the road. I can't sleep in the middle of the day, which I understand is not your issue because everybody works their own shifts and business got to go on during the daytime, not night. Um, but just trying to keep the noise to a minimum would be appreciated. With the exhaust brakes, I don't know if there's a town ordinance or not with exhaust brakes on town roads. I don't understand why there wouldn't be. Um, like I said, the trucks are actually pushing us off the road. 
I got pushed off the road probably into a decent sized tire rut yesterday during the snowstorm. Uh, there's potholes on the road, side of the roads now. The road's actually, where you can see the tire tracks going off, it's actually peeling and cracking. It's pulling away from the asphalt, so it's falling apart. The road is not a standard width road, so two normal cars are tight to fit down. Now you've got two tractor trailers, and they're automatically going off this, each side of the road. Um, like I said, the speeding was an issue for us. The exhaust brakes. Um, there's constantly mud being driven up and down the road. Their sweeping efforts really are inadequate. Um, during the rainstorms, they actually become very slick because of the type of mo dirt they're moving. It's more of a clay material, so their sweeping kind of grinds it in and makes it almost like, um, I can't even describe it, just very slick. Um, I guess if I talked to the project manager about the starting early, he said they're not supposed to start until 7 o'clock, but they keep showing up at 6.30. Um, at some points, I wasn't even allowed into our driveways because they were parking in front of it. I parked behind them trying to get them to move out of the way. They wouldn't move. I had to go up and over the grass because the driver wasn't even in the vehicle. He just waved me up and over the grass to get into my own driveway. So I know as us as a neighborhood, I don't know if anybody else is going to speak on their behalf as well, but I know we're getting frustrated with the conditions that we have to live with. So I'm going to, <coughs> you can talk when I'm done, but before we go on to more people, uh, I guess I'd like to clarify for, for myself and others on the commission, my recollection of our involvement, and that doesn't preclude, you know, a, a dialogue here. Uh, we got involved with this. This is MDC's construction work, <clears throat> right, within the town right of way in, this, in the street, so they pulled the permit. We got involved because they wanted to set up staging construction sites. And stockpile and sites. Stock, stockpile sites. So um, I don't drive that part of town. I'm not impacted by it, so I'm not as familiar with it. <clears throat> um, is, is this activity that you hear being described, activity that's coming from the stockpile sites, or is it the work that's actually taking place on uh, those roads? It's the both, the back and forth, and this, you know, I, I think it's mostly the truck traffic. It's from the stockpile. Yeah, bringing material stockpile. in Elm and, Street and out. Elm is a dead-end road, so yeah. it's just a stockpile that the trucks are coming back and forth to. So they're we stockpiling have earth material that's being pulled out of holes elsewhere, brought here, piled then, up. Yep, and, and then reused and elsewhere. reused. Yep. Correct. As well as uh, construction piping and, and that kind of stuff, right? That, Isn't that also no piping on our that site now? Middletown, Middletown right? Avenue. We approved another location for that. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So you you, you talked to the I heard someone say you talked, talked to the to, town manager, uh, Jeff David, Bridges. David Anderson did. Okay. Another uh, owner of the farmland. Okay. And one of the houses down there as well. Okay. I don't know if he's going to speak or not, but. I believe he talked to him last week or week before, and he's going to have the town engineer, from what I heard, <coughs> look at everything. I don't know if he's heard back anything or anything else like that, but I've talked to John Malone, one of the project managers for Bouzar, I believe it is, the construction tr company or the trucking company, and he tried to remedy some of the issues, but some of them have not been remedied. I don't know if they ever will be, but I just wanted to express their opinion that it's getting annoying we've had probably 14 or 15 trucks lined up outside of our houses some mornings waiting to be loaded at seven o'clock in the morning and not being able to get in our driveways have them idle past the actually DEP's limit if you really want to go technical into the three minutes of idling um, I mean I don't mind the trucks idling but not in front of our houses and all these pretty much all of our Houses down here are represented by at least someone. And it's, we only have about five or six houses down in that end of the street. Okay. So we did, if just to, I, I, if I had known this was going to be discussed, I would have had the file in front of me. But there were, uh, I believe, conditions on the routes and the amount of truck traffic, if I remember correctly. I don't know how far we got into that in terms of the conditions of approval, but there wasn't. Uh, 
uh, indication of how much activity would be happening and what times of day. So, um, so that certainly those are things that uh, w we can look into, and obviously as well as some of the others. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, sure. I I kind of think that the time is a factor when they can start, and although that's difficult with trucking companies and with maybe their contracts. Um, I would think maybe they could start a half an hour later or something, some kind of compromise along those lines. And uh, again, Elm Street always was a big problem in my mind in approval of the site over there, but uh, <coughs> because of the narrowness of it, and I complained that night when we were just discussing it, but you know, really, I didn't know what else to do because the other site wasn't uh, conducive to, to it. So, uh, All right. so I, I, on, uh, I'm, I'm recalling I'm recalling Peter's uh, recollection recollection as well that there were there were volumes of trucks discussed, et cetera, and would be on the record. And it's something that we can go back and check. Um, I do have some information from that meeting. Do you? Yep. Um, my name's Heather Dowd. I'm at 251 Elm Street. I am right next door to the project. And uh, Mr. Anderson's property is then on the other side of their property. Uh, I kick myself every day because I did not come to the town meeting on June 6th because I was working late. And I did not think that this would get on the docket as late as it did that night. Um, the town meeting said three to four trucks according to Balthazar, 15 to 16 times a day, which equals 30 to 40 trips a day. We are seeing at least 15 trucks more than once a week show up by 7 a.m., lining up from 251 Elm Street all the way up to the Smith's house. And they sit there and they block the driveway, as, as he stated. Um, we know that they are working outside of the town's noise ordinance. We have, I just spoke to the MDC project manager last week, Jason Waterbury, who put in writing to Balthazar and copied the town of Wethersfield on the meeting information, saying that they are speeding. They're getting these complaints for speeding down our street, for idling in front of people's driveways, for um, starting before 7 a.m. and violating the noise ordinance and that they're taking the illegal turn coming off of the Glastonbury Bridge onto our street, which for those of us that live on Elm Street, we know that at least three people in the last 10 years that have been pulled out of their cars by the jaws of life. So to see these giant dump trucks take this illegal turn on probably the worst intersection in the town of Wethersfield is just an accident waiting to happen. So. That is all the information that I have for you. Thank you. I recall that topic too. <laughs> um, you know, <clears throat> so feel free to keep coming up. My my reaction is, you know, there's there's ways to go back and talk to the applicant about how this is playing out, and um, whether there's opportunities for the town to offer some other place for them to wait. For the for the bell at seven o'clock, other than you know, right outside the gate of the the property, um, why do they might have be to part wait solution. Wait out there on so right. I mean, that's that's what I'm getting at, right? If if there's some other place for them to hang out and line up and queue up, you know. Yeah. Yes, sir. Craig Anderson, Anderson Farms. Um, we own on both sides of the street plus a house, <clears throat> and we. David spoke, my uncle spoke in June, and said the road is not wide enough for two large dump trucks to pass. So they're gonna have to either pull into the church there or find another spot and let the other one go, but they're not doing that. So what he said is they've gone at least a foot, some places two feet, off the road. So now the road is breaking down and it's really making a mess. Plus they're trespassing on everybody's property all the way down the street. That's like if I drove up on your lawn. Well, who's going to pay for that or fix that? Or should they be ticketed? Or should be no parking signs along the whole street because it's not wide enough on both sides? Because you shouldn't be able to park on this street. You can't get around. And we have wide uh, agricultural equipment that's 12, 13 feet wide. So if I want to go to the meadows and plant corn and they have 13 dump trucks 
uh, parked there and there's two telephone poles. I'm not gonna be able to go plant corn because they're parked on a narrow street. So eventually the police will be involved because they're, they're blocking the road and blocking driveways. Ha have the police been involved to date? Not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. But, oh, they have. All right. I never, I haven't called them. We haven't really started going yet. It's still snowing out, so. Go ahead. Um, after the MDC was notified last week, and he told me that he wouldn't be notifying Balthazar of their violations, uh, again this morning and yesterday morning, they showed up prior to 6.30 in the morning with their dump trucks idling. I have videos, I have photographs with timestamps, whatever you need to show you them here as early as 6.15 every day last week and so far every day this week. It is only getting worse as the warm weather comes along. I have videos going down the street where they have pushed me off as of yesterday uh, trying to pass. So I have lots of information to be able to back up what we are here to complain about. Thank you. So that's my question: is what if, if they can if they're going to widen the road, or they're going to have to if the company that's doing the damage, all the truck com, uh, truckers, if that company's going to have to pay to repair repave the road, and maybe put curbs up so they can't go on everybody else's property. And meanwhile, are they going to pay to fix what they did? So um, I'm reasonably sure that Peter already wrote down check on the conditions that um, we would have put on the application and there weren't, and whether, there weren't many I just looked oh is that right yeah um, do you think we called for repairing the road no they were all pertaining to the stockpile site itself not to the road gotcha now where the stockpile is they do own another two acres behind it that they were renting to Gilbert farms they could fix it so they could move those piles over make a driveway and just park in their own yard to keep them right off the street you, think you follow me <clears throat> so is it, it's a narrow is it three wide? and a half acre piece and they're just using right at the street they have all yeah. these big piles of stuff in the bulldozers so they're back in one dump trunk sometimes two in at a time but if they rearranged it properly they could probably turn around on their own property or the owner the one that to Chacho's property, the owner of the property, and line them up there, and they could just pull up to the piles, load them, and they'd drive out. They wouldn't have to line the streets and block the driveways. <coughs> it wouldn't change the width problem. The road's too narrow. So, right. And there is a school bus that comes down there. So I don't know how they do that with a school bus. It's got to be hard. Huh? It's got to be tight. Yeah. Right. So. I don't know. That's how right. we feel. Thank you. As you can tell, we're not going to be able to give you a, <coughs> uh, a determination tonight, right? Um, but what's going to end up happening is Peter's going to obviously take this back, <coughs> review the, the, the comments, <coughs> or review the, the record to see what the conditions were, um, and then turn around and, and do what? You talk to the town manager? And, and for all I know, the town engineer could be already in the middle of this. I. I'm not involved in all of his uh, affairs, so um, so this may already be underway. If the town manager was notified, I'm sure the first call he made was to town the town engineer and or the traffic officer at the police department, so um, there may be something already in the works. It's just something that I'm not aware of, So, so but in the morning I will uh, notify both the town manager, the town engineer, and the traffic control officer, the PD, to see if we can come up with some S solutions to the ongoing issues down there. I have one quick question for you. How long is this project supposed to take? Is this going to be doing, going on for 10 years? We put a specific time frame on that, and I think that the project has been fast-tracked sooner than we originally anticipated. Uh, they've done some things in the field, I think, to try and move the, the whole thing along, but I, I have to defer to the town engineer who's been more involved in that than I have. I think... There was a 18 month, 18 month was, time frame, well. I think, when uh, this was first granted, but I think it shortened up because of the, some of the progress they made over the winter time. Okay. So we're being and told at least the middle of 2019, possibly the end of the 2019. End of 2019. There are different projects out there that they're working on throughout the town, so um, I can't right. say for certain. 
but 18 months from last June is a is a year earlier than you're stating, right? Yeah. Right. So <coughs> we'll add that to the list as well. Okay. I just don't right. understand if, as a solution, possibly to help people in our neighborhood. I don't know if the fun zone lot that I think the town has back taxes on would be an option to say, hey, we'll give you the lot here if we can negate some of the taxes of that lot to help the property owner there. That's right around the corner from the project site, big enough open commercial lot that they'd be able to use as a stockpile there and help out the construction project being closer to the site, less, I'm gonna say, Don't accident prone because you're not gonna have the track axles going up and down the roads as much and it'll be a quicker turnaround for the construction company. I don't know if that's an option you guys can talk about or that, that, that that's private, that the the, the option you mentioned is probably not a realistic option that's going to be a construction site shortly and it there's no back taxes just so I, that I, I, but but there may be other options that would be looked at so um so certainly the town engineer will be trying to help them it's in everyone's interest for the project to move along faster right. and so but they should be complying with all of our noise ordinances, traffic control, safety. So, I mean, obviously there are problems that have to be addressed. One other safety issue to be addressed. Uh, I don't know if this group is aware, but the um, state police have pulled their vehicles over and pulled out the, uh, the weight machines to catch them. And they have been overweight for a few trips. Um, so we do also have that on the record as a sa another safety concern. And we can, I mean, we are not, <laughs> I don't know anything about weighing a truck, but I see how big this machine is that they're loading and they're doing three to four bucket loads into each dump truck, which is mounted quite high. So I would assume that most of their trips are on the heavier side than what they should be. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to uh, <coughs> add, add some thoughts to that dialogue? Okay, so we will, you know, Peter will follow up as, you know, as, as a liaison of this, you know, uh, citizen committee. That he's, the, he's the town's liaison, so he'll take it back and uh, express your, your thoughts and opinions. All righty? So thanks for participating. Fair enough. Let's get, if I go ahead. If you want to you maybe give Denise your contact information, she can take phone numbers or emails or however you want to do that, and we can certainly keep you in the loop or uh, track, follow up with you. So, yeah, As a matter of fact, want to, want to just take a piece of paper, flip it over, and everybody put their name and email if they want to get a direct. Otherwise, you know, just a couple of you, whatever you want. Just create a list over there on the side table, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Fair enough? Alrighty, returning to the agenda, 3.2. Uh, this is application number 1976-18Z, RFJ Productions, seeking a, I'm at the right one, right? Site plan and design review for 860 Silas Dean Highway. So the desire is to do an indoor commercial recreational facility under section 5.2. So welcome. Oh, if welcome you would introduce everybody. yourself Jonah and then Denise. give us a summary. Uh, Jonah Evanson, uh, RFJ Productions. Uh, Mike Panic uh, is the owner uh, of A60 Silestine Highway. Um, the goal right now is to uh, hopefully in the next couple months uh, open up what's called, uh, commonly called an escape room. Uh, an adventure room is probably uh, another name for it. Um, biggest thing with the escape rooms right now, I'm sure, I'm not sure if anyone here has been to one before. Uh, I've already met with uh, Peter, I've met with uh, the fire marshal. Uh, there's going to be locks, there's going to be puzzles, there's going to be games, there's going to be um, uh, basically, hopefully five different individual rooms. They're a themed base. Uh, up to five to six people uh, on average will come in, uh, rent these rooms for about an hour. Uh, they'll have an hour to basically escape this room. Uh, so they'll be solving puzzles. Um, trying to figure out step by step 
uh, to uh, achieve a common goal. Um, we're also going to be putting a conference room in there, hopefully to generate stuff, uh, meetings for businesses. Um, hours of operation generally are going to be from 11-ish in the morning, uh, hopefully to 10 o'clock at night most days. Weekends might be a little bit longer. Um, again, it's pretty basic, straightforward, indoor recreational facility. You guys have uh, the narrative already, so I'm trying not to repeat a lot of that. Yep. Um, I can open up to the questions. And, and so not. Uh, everything you're doing is on the inside, right? So everything's the on the internal. Yeah, so, everything's and, inside. So and everything are, are, obviously up to code. The, the rooms are all being created. Correct. Right? It's, it's, so it's, it's a it's shell a, right now. It's 3,800 square feet. Uh, we're hoping to do five rooms with one conference room that might go down to four. Uh, we obviously have to meet with the, the building inspectors and get everything up to code. I think this is going to be an A3 assembly. Uh, as far as the building code, um, so we're working with them. Bathrooms, obviously, we have to get approved uh, here first. Okay. Uh, plenty of parking. There's there's 42 uh, parking spots. I know that the Russian uh, School of Math building is right next door. Um, for the most part, we don't really anticipate having any more than like maybe 10 cars per hour, um, and that would be if we're completely booked up. Uh, with the 42 spots there right now, uh, I know the Russian math is really busy. I think between the hours of like five and eight, uh, so I don't really see it being a problem there either. Um, five and eight, when? The Russian School of Math is really busy between five and eight. They seem to have and classes, and, and that's right next door to me. A.M. or P.M.? P.M. P.M. P.M., yeah, 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 so it's an evening type school, okay. That's the Russian School of Math, yeah. An adult school, is it? Uh, mostly children, I think, would be the, the Russian School of Math part. I think it's, it's mostly high school. <coughs> One of my questions, Mr. Chairman, I'll ask him. Uh, Go ahead. Is there a noise issue between, potentially between both of you? Uh, no, not at all. Not at I all. There's no. You guys may be uh, quiet, rel you consider yourselves relatively quiet in these rooms? Uh, there yeah. could be some excitement, uh, obviously, with, with people that are kind of coming through as they kind of figure out puzzles and solve certain things. But as yeah. far as like screaming is concerned, and no, there shouldn't be yeah. any of that. And yours is more daytime and theirs is more night No, I would say the research that I've done right now with a lot of the escape rooms, they're really, really busy on the weekends. Um, and, and by really busy, they're, they're pretty much booked up from the hours of like 11 a.m. to, and some places are open until 11 p.m. Um, they're hourly with a half hour between rooms to reset the rooms. Um, I think the Russian School of Math, and I think Mike might be able to, I don't know what their hours are on the weekends, but um, these are just really, really popular. Again, weekends and then weekend nights. So I don't really see it being a, a, a huge One other question, Mr. Sure. Chairman, I have. Uh, can those uh, uh, petitions between the five rooms be opened up so that you can combine rooms? at all? No, we're going to have, we're going to, uh, we're going to put solid walls, drywall, uh, along with uh, insulation and things like that to make it a little yeah, bit more soundproof. You don't see any need to combine rooms then? Not at this time. Pretty, pretty large. You imagine your work will be in that kind of work. Uh, no, I mean, we're going to have five set preset rooms. They're going to be five individual rooms and then they're going to be theme based. They're going to look, you know, we're, we might have an Egyptian room and it's going to look like an Egyptian type pyramid-like thing inside uh, to change that out and, and combine them with the other rooms would, wouldn't make much sense. Well, you talked about one room being a discussion room of some sort. I didn't know what you meant by that. Yeah, the, the, the conference room is going to be um, specifically, hopefully, we're, we're going to try to generate uh, group activities, team building activities for uh, corporate events. So maybe a team of or a group of 15 people, someone wants to rent out the room. They can have lunch, do a sales meeting in that conference room, and then at the end of that, rent one of the uh, escape rooms or two. Obviously, if there's multiple, uh, you know, 15, 20 people, they can rent three. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a team building exercise. They can have a kickoff, some sort of lunch. Um, it's just a way for them to rent a room and do some sort of. So it's adult and? And children. Yeah, and children. Well, we hope to uh, also use that for birthdays. Uh, for children, so we'll have a couple uh, children theme base rooms where they can do that as well. So you're a more sophisticated operation than Chuck E. Cheese. Right? Uh, I'm I'm not. My wife's pretty sophisticated. I'm just a simpleton. So, uh, smart guy yeah. too. 
Will you be serving alcohol or no, food no, to people? No. So it's bring your bring your birthday stuff in. Yeah, it'll be a bring. I'm hoping uh, to. We might try to use. Um, I, I eat there six days a week. Not, not that I'm um, recommending you guys go there, but like uh, El Pollo Guapo is on the Weather Shield. It's doing Weather Shield. It's got fantastic food. So we're hoping to maybe use some catering uh, from them. Uh, you know, maybe Village Pizza and some of the pizza places around here. We can so people can maybe order that in that part of the group. But as far as we're not going to be producing food, we're not going to be offering, I mean, coffee, wine, uh, not wine, <laughs> uh, but no wine, no beer, coffee, water, things like that. And then um, you mentioned here about the fire egress. Will the doors have panic switches or panic bars? Uh, preliminary, the information that we're getting right now from uh, our uh, an architect is that, yeah, based on, I think, at the A3 assembly, I think we would need panic doors on both sides that have the release and with the noise sound. I don't know if, I, I've asked a question, I haven't gotten a response yet, because I, I did get uh, a response today. I guess today. what I'm asking is if the fire alarm goes off in the building, will everyone be able to egress, or will there be a panic switch that will override your, say the door the door is, is locked? In the, in the rooms themselves? Something. In because like the, the escape goes off, well, the doors automatically release so people can the, get out. Okay, so uh, as you guys can see in, in the uh, uh, the illustration, those doors will just be open. They're not going to have any locking mechanisms on them at all. Uh -huh. So as people go into the escape rooms or the adventure rooms, that specific door that opens and that's just going to stay open and closed. Okay. Uh, so so there will be no lock on that door. That would be absolutely crazy. If fire happens, someone can't get out. Yeah, I've already cleared that. Fire marshal thought the same thing. <laughs> There's a similar facility, I believe, at West Farms or someplace in the area. There's an escape room. There's there's a bunch now, yeah. Is that going to be similar to the, the other ones that are out there? They're uh, different. And ours are going to be a lot better. But there apart, you go. Apart, I assume that you know what the others are. Before I do, I do. Yeah. yeah, we've done we've done quite a bit of research on this so far. Um, there, there's some at the Buckland Hills Mall, uh, one in West Hartford, Middletown, um, and and they're all a little bit smaller. You know, 240 square feet per room. Ours is going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, so this is the first effort you're making. You don't have any others. No, no. <coughs> but I am a fantastic insurance agent in town. That, that is my second business. <laughs> and I have a question about a town planner. Uh, do you see conflict in the parking? I don't know how you can on this site. It's brand new. And uh, the lower level is also there, and it's well done and well landscaped. Down there. There's and yet we gave a, a limitation on landscaping at one point when we approved this a couple of years ago. So there's, there's plenty of parking with the addition of the lower parking lot. Uh, the activity associated with the Russian school uh, for math is at concentrated periods of time where people are dropping off and people are picking up. I'll, I'll let the property owner maybe uh, explain that in more detail. Uh, um, but I don't anticipate uh, that the site would be overwhelmed uh, with, with both of these you know, businesses operating successfully. So At the same time. At the same time. I think there's... Some point. Yep. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Sir? Any other questions for the applicant? All right. So this is. Can I just you? Yeah, absolutely, please. Let's see if you guys can lower my rent for me. Good evening. Mike Panic, uh, president of Phoenix Realty Management, owner of 860 Silestein Highway. <clears throat> it was almost two years and two months to the day that I stood before you when we bought this property and transformed it into the building that you see today. Uh, and uh, almost immediately, we were able to come before you and get approval to put the Russian School of Math, which was considered a change of use uh, because of the school use. Uh, and we put in a, a series of uh, seven classrooms uh, on that half of the building in 3,200 square feet. Um, and I promised you that night that I would not put in a nail salon uh, a quick mart uh, that we would wait um, as the owner of several properties on Southstein Highway, including the 1260 property and the 1190 property where Liberty Bank is that we built <coughs> 11 years ago. I promise you that we would wait for a quality tenant. And I assure you that I've gotten many phone calls from the uses, cigar uh, shops, nail salons, and things that we don't want on the Southstein Highway. I'm very conscious of what we put in there. And I waited almost the full two years until Jonah came with this idea, and I think it's a good idea for the space. Um, I think that it will uh, provide uh, people tend not just to come from Weathersfield to these kind of locations, but they come from other towns. And when you get people coming from Glastonbury and other towns uh, to this location, 
they'll be exposed to everything that Silesian Highway has to offer, and I'm sure that'll generate traffic flow to a lot of the other properties around town. Uh, to answer a couple of specific questions that you had or uh, comments, um, as far as the noise goes, the setup for, uh, for this uh, situation is that the rooms are going to be all on the outside wall uh, of the property, and the classrooms actually for the Russian School of Math are on the outside wall on the opposite side, so there's no direct classrooms and or uh, escape rooms that are going to be on the common wall between the two, which for the record is an 18 inch thick concrete wall that I've been on one side and the other and I tried it because I was concerned about the noise as well and I didn't want my other tenant to be upset when somebody got the combination to the puzzle and you know was nervous and I went on that side because we also have had people that had wanted to open up a uh, an exercise place and play music and you know we didn't rent to them obviously but We've blasted music on that side and went on the school side with Mr. Green, who's the principal of the school, and we you can't hear it. So I'm very, very comfortable that whatever happens inside of the escape rooms, there won't be any conflict with my other tenant, and I should be the one that was worrying about that just as much as you guys worry about that. As far as the parking, I think Peter said it well. When we came to get the approval, uh, when we remodeled the building, we purchased uh, through a lease with the power company the space in the back where we uh, – constructed the parking lot that's down there. And uh, with the Russian School of Math, who does, uh, who have classrooms that have 10 children at a time in them, and sometimes four and five classrooms, um, that parking lot is never used. Their motto, uh, their motto is, is they don't let parents inside and they don't let parents uh, sit outside and wait. So most of the parents, it's a drop off and come back in an hour to an hour and a half and pick the kids up. So uh, there's never more than 15 cars in the lot, even when they have 40 kids in the class. Most of the parents drop off, go to Dunkin' Donuts, go to TJ Maxx. Uh, they're not sitting around idling, uh, which seemed to be a popular word tonight, uh, in the parking lot. So I don't think parking is an issue at all, and I think Peter has spoken to that as well. Um, I think this is a very good use. I would um, hope that uh, everyone on the board uh, sees it that way, and certainly, uh, um, Mr. Evans and myself would open up to any other question you have. I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for your time. Uh, I, I see it the way you see it. And uh, you did a good job there. Thank you. Appreciate and, uh, it. Looking down once more at it, particularly down under the power lines, I'm impressed with what you did with your site. Yeah, well, I pr appreciate it. The businesses you're bringing in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, this is not a public hearing, but is there anybody who else who would like to participate? All right. Any other questions for the applicant from the board? I make a motion we approve application 1976-18Z. Second. No reason for conditions? Nothing, right? Didn't okay. see any, no. Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good luck. Thank you for your time. Take care. And thank you for waiting. <clears throat> Next item, 3.3, .3, application number 1977-18-Z, Ashok Thacker, seeking site plan and design review in accordance with 5.2 to construct a 966-square-foot addition and other improvements at, nine, at 1698 Berlin Turnpike. Good evening, Mr. Cunningham. Welcome back. Yes, thank Excuse you. Me, Good Mr. evening. Yes. Can, I, can I ask the town planner a question? Why did we get this back? application we approved it. you did I think I know why but I want to hear it from you okay <laughs> you keep me guessing or you, no, no, um, no. I, I think there were a number of technical issues from the highway issues and the drainage issues they revised they the, so much that you guys wanted to bring it back here and have us review it again yeah, my memo my memo work on the material that in front of us okay <laughs> Thank you. Is that what it is? My memo summarized it, but in essence, it's the parking lot uh, has been uh, revised from the plan that you approved, uh, and staff uh, um, were not comfortable with going forward with that without the commission reviewing it and approving it again. All right. So that, that's a perfect setup. Mr. Cunningham, why don't we just start with, can you describe the changes? Certainly. Um, for the record, my name is Brian Cunningham, I'm a professional engineer. I work for Robert Green Associates in Terryville, Connecticut, and our client is Asha Thakar. Okay. 
Why don't you just put it on the chairs or something? Or if that's comfortable for you, go ahead. Uh, this way I can point to it. Okay. Um, just to refamiliarize yourself, so you probably already know, um, Berlin Turnpike is to the left side of the map. Um, this is the 515 package store. Um, the proposal is to add an addition to the back. That's the same size. Um, we did move uh, an access way to a storeroom from the rear of the building to the beginning of the addition. And what that did was it eliminated a retaining wall that was needed at the back corner of the building to, so we could have the doorway entering the building. So now the side of the building to the south acts as the retaining wall as the foundation wall on the north side of the building does. So that works. The, um, as far as roof drainage, we still have the two uh, rain gardens proposed that are sized to handle the surface area of the roofs. Um, we changed the configuration of the parking lot, and that's what Peter was talking about, why we're really, really here. Um, our client wanted to define uh, head-in parking along the front of the building, similar to what people do today. So we were able to get a number of parking spaces across the front of the building, and then we elected to offset the balance of the parking. We actually shifted the parking to the south of the building, about five feet toward the road, just to el further eliminate some of the um, proposed pavement <clears throat> that we had added before. We had a strip of land before that would have been paved. To offset the additional pavement, which is shown in yellow, this is um, much less than was initially approved. Um, what we're proposing to do is to remove an old driveway on the south side of the property, highlighted in green, and there's a little bit of excess pavement to the north of the building also um, that we feel we can reconfigure to lessen the size on the property itself. Um, we did a calculation of the impervious surface on the property itself, which is around this rectangle. It's 100 foot deep by 200 foot long property. Um, we're able to, the existing impervious surface was 867 square yards. Uh, that's a, actually was a part of an engineering comment I'll get to in a minute. And the proposed impervious service is 743 square yards. So we've got 120 odd square feet less impervious surface on the property itself. Um, I did not take into account the paving within the existing state DOT right away. Under this proposal, we're not proposing to make any changes to that pavement area out within the state right away. And that's consistent with the last time, right? Um, we had submitted with that, but um, a, a request was made to convert some of that to grass, a grass surface. And you'll see that in when I, I'll talk about the uh, town engineer's comments, okay. where he brought that point up. So, yeah, so, what this configuration of the parking lot does is allows people to come in and out of either of the two driveways that exist on either end of the property. Um, that was important. Also, uh, delivery trucks. Um, initially, I was of the impression it was served by SU-30 box trucks solely. Uh, they actually do get some other larger vehicles in there from time to time. and. Um, those larger vehicles tend to dwell in the state right away along the uh, paved island out alongside the turnpike, but on the, away from the traffic side. Um, yeah, so that's, the, that's a summary of the changes. Now, I did get three comments from the town engineer last week. And then 
the gist of those, um, the town engineer wanted or suggested that the parking to the south of the building be moved to align with the parking across the front of the building. I looked at that, but I have a concern with that, and that is we have a uh, refuse dumpster off the end of the parking lot. I wouldn't want to see that truck when he's making his, he, he drives in, he gets to the dumpster, when he leaves he has to back up and then run out the rest of the parking lot. By offsetting the parking it gives him more room on the property to make that turn without backing up and getting, I think he'd be getting into the state right away, even though there's still about 20 odd feet till you get to the actual edge of the roadway. Um, to air, I feel on a side of safety, it'd be better to leave the alignment the way we've shown it to allow him to back up on the property and turn and then continue on north out of the property. Um, he brought up that initial, on the initial proposal, we had listed the impervious surface existing at 12,000, almost 13,000 square feet. Um, that was on, the, on that initial proposal, I counted for the area within the state right away because I was doing something in that area. We were gonna remove some pavement and put some grass in. However, now our proposal is, is not to do that so I felt it was best just to um, list the coverages within the property itself. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, he also asked me to use a, a table that summarizes the impervious surface before and after in square yards as opposed to square feet, which I had shown. So I would, suggest that we will make that change and we'll replace a note with the table um, in conformance with the town uh, standard for MS4 permit information. And with that, if you've got questions, I will respond. So I know it wasn't that long ago, but oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, just, just a bit of clarification. Uh, in your comments uh, <laughs> pertaining to um, comment number two of the town engineer's uh, report, my, my sense of his, uh, of his wording is that he's simply noting that your plans uh, change that uh, you know, nearly 13,000 square foot figure down to the, your current plans as submitted, or your proposed plans as mm -hmm. submitted, down to 7,800 square feet. Correct. You didn't specifically object to doing that. Uh, it sounds like my interpretation or my sense of what he's getting at is that your, your plans need to uh, fully state the, the data that is applicable Mm -hmm. uh, in the second sentence to that uh, to that condition in his report. Yep. And uh, it sounds as though you're not objecting to doing that. You will revise. Oh, we can. Yeah, we can certainly. That's yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I have this vague recollection, and it's sad because it wasn't that long ago. I have this vague recollection that this committee asked you to increase the green space in the front last time. Is that why that was there? And is that what we're taking out now? That was, and, and again, that's um, related to the way the business takes its deliveries, that sh shrinking that space out in front would affect their ability to bring their product on into the store. Um, it's a very small lot. We've got, you know, it's 100 feet deep, and it would make it more difficult to accommodate the vehicles that are making deliveries and the customers that are coming when those deliveries are being made 
to revert that paved space into some green space. <coughs> so I'd ask that that change be accepted. And there's a lot there's a lot more pavement than most stores and they take deliveries too, right? So it no. uh, and and okay. you know, in the past it looks so, like, you know, it could have been other use, but now it's a it's been in the liquor store for a while and and our client wishes to expand to provide a larger product line and so um, I share well I share with you know your the the goals to improve the green space um, we are providing a net decrease in the impervious surface by removing some unused pavement on the south side of the property reverting it to turf and then a little cleanup on the, the north side so I think we're able to meet Part of the intent to reduce impervious surface to help the town with the state MS4 permit requirements, but um, I would ask that I think the the space is needed for the way the business is conducted on the site. Okay. And at this point, you're you have no need to really go before DOT for a permit because you're not touching their property per se, right? Correct. Yeah. Landscaping, Peter. Uh, there is no landscaping uh, I didn't think so. proposed. So just to refresh your memory and contrast against what's being proposed, there was a 30-foot wide grass island uh, in the front of the property. There was a different parking layout. Um, so contrary to this layout, the, the, there was the same parking spaces on the south side of the building. There were no parking spaces in front of the building in the previous plan. They were all head-in spaces sort of facing the Berlin Turnpike, and they were ending where this 30-foot-wide grass island was proposed within the DOT right-of-way. So that has been taken out. It is always our uh, intent and our effort when you have uh, a site with a historically extensive amount of asphalt to try and convert that to... Uh, That's good, yes. I'm just wondering yes. what do you do besides grass? Trees, shrubs, I mean, there's a couple of opportunities to probably put some trees in to at least make the effort. Uh, I still think there's room to put some of that island in the front within the DOT right away. It will require DOT permitting. So, now, Peter, I yeah, I think there's a compromise here that probably could be, uh, you know, this is the other end of the spectrum compared to what you had approved. So um, I think if the parking on the south side of the building stays the way it's proposed there, there's room for, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with this property. Uh, most times I go by, there's maybe three or four cars in the parking lot. Um, so I think even with the addition, you know, there's plenty of room probably for trucks to come and obviously if, and still be accommodated on the site and have uh, some green space in the front and have some landscaping, so. It's just that we seem to get all concerned with as it's built, and particularly the silence team with uh, landscaping issues and maybe cutting back on landscaping, and yet out here on the Berlin Turnpike, which a lot of us wonder about at times, I'm one of them, I know others are here, what are we doing about improving the image? Yes, no, I, I would agree and with you. Landscaping is part of that. You know, I would, I would contrast this with the uh, car dealership a little more to exactly. the north. I think you didn't you require... put them in the car dealership as you'd be planting them between the vehicles well, on the top of the roof. you also didn't require it there because it was, you only gave them a permit for a limited period of time and the investment on in that case was, uh, was substantial. So it's not an apples to apples comparison. But um, So I think there's, ro there's room here for some level of compromise and uh, I think this plan is, from a traffic circulation point of view, is a preferred because it allows li two-way like traffic. So, um, no problem there. I'm right. just simply saying 
where do we start on the, you know, the Berlin Turnpike as far as landscaping? And maybe some of the <coughs> businesses below, which are being renovated now, and others, uh, they may want to put some landscaping out there. Uh, and we're not, I don't know how much of that we're requiring. I see even across the street, the new gas station probably, we even cut back slightly on some of the landscaping there, I think, didn't we? I don't know. But anyway, this is still an issue, and I think we ought to be addressing it. I mean, so, so Brian, how much, <clears throat> what's the width between the Berlin Turnpike curb gutter mm -hmm. and the right of way line? Uh, it's about 20 feet, as I recall. Um, yeah, this is, it's a one inch is 20, so, and this is, yeah. that's about an inch, so about 20, about 20, 20 feet. feet. And so the previous plan had an island there, probably right to the 20 foot line, right? And the, and the parking, if I understand it correctly, was nose into it. Yeah. So the parking that's, was that's facing, correct. right? That's correct. So you got so out of your car and went to the back of your car to the store, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've swapped that around. Yes. So the, so the whole purpose, if again, if I'm recalling, it was to get some green space and to provide access control along the Berlin Turnpike, which means that you have to go see the DOT versus today, mm -hmm. you know, you're proposing don't bother going back to DOT. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to get into that, right? Correct. Are there issues there that you're aware of for which, you know, like dirty dirt, was this a gas station before? Is it a contaminated plume? It's going to cost a gazillion dollars to do that crap. I have no no information regarding that. Because right. on the surface, it's blacked up, and I get it. It's a, you know, it's a cost, but it, you know, as an opportunity for this, uh, as an opportunity for the town to be uh, looking to clean up that area somewhat, I see it as an opportunity. Right. Right. I mean, as I recall, too, we had, last time we went with the grassed surface within the right-of-way, uh, knowing that uh, DOT doesn't typically allow you to put plants. Right, right. So you within, start with grass, and if they, you know, if they let you throw a couple shrubs in there, fine. If we were lucky. They won't what? They don't let you put grass in there? No, they'll let you they'll put do grass. grass. Yeah. They, 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 they don't want big trees planted at the side of a highway where you're doing 50 miles an hour. They don't want fixed trees, objects. Fixed yeah. Trees get big. I understand. Yeah. But bushes and whatnot, you know. <laughs> Flower, flower beds for the snow to be on. I mean, if <coughs> I think we had a condition last time about working with staff about the landscaping around the rain gardens. I think that would be appropriate to maintain that. Um, and you still have those rain gardens, right? Yes, we do. And you know, there's some opportunity north and south, perhaps if if staff and the owner can work out some landscaping of some sort there to help make, you know, to go along with what the commission is stating about trying to improve aesthetics. I think as soon as you, as soon as you get into the state right away, they're going to require that you constrain the access points. That's, that's fundamentally what's going on here, right? It's, it's quite possible that would happen. Yes. Um, but again, there's, there's probably 20, 25 feet on either side along the frontage. So am I, am I correct? Is it wide open or is it their curb there? It's just black. Huh? There, is a, there is a raised island. So thank you for clarifying that. I, I was thinking it was just a wide open. No, no. No, there is a curb. There's actually a telephone pole in the middle. Okay. So, so, so DOT is not going to necessarily make you modify that a great deal. In order to again, my thought was was just their, wide open. Yeah, their concern is is predominantly on sight line coming out of the driveway, which is you know we've calculated out in excess of 850 feet, so we're we're good in that in that regard. So so what you know this committee can turn around and approve it, work with staff to get more green space, et cetera. But unless we were to go the extra mile and say no 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 we want an island, work with staff. The island's not going to come to pass, um, so there will be no green space in the front. I mean, that's because there's no leverage to make that happen. So this committee would need to, if they choose to, make that happen, right? Well, I just got to start someplace. If we're if we're going to beautify the you know the Berlin Turnpike, we can't keep 
going and saying, well, not this one, not this not one. one. Uh, yeah. I think there's an opportunity here that this can be done. And, and I hate to say, you know, the, the, I understand your applicant wants to put that building up, but I think we have an obligation to the appearance of the turnpike. And uh, this is the way that I think we have to get started somewhere. Take some small steps. I think you can probably tell from my questioning that I tend to agree. Right. But, uh, you know, I don't think we could leave it as work with staff and try to figure something out unless we tell them we want an island. Is staff willing to do that? And it's Peter. <laughs> I'm willing to work with all of our applicants to, you know, if you, uh, however, I would need some specific guidance from the commission to make sure on the back end that, you know, we, we figure out a good plan that addresses the commission's uh, concerns. So you understand our concerns. certainly. I, I make it along that south side. It doesn't have to be out toward you know the, the landscaping. The doesn't like it out there. You know, we, I understand why. You know, even though they can plant shorter trees and cut them out once in a while, after a while. But you know, along the side or stuff like that, toward the front. Yeah, as I said, I think there's some there's some opportunity for some trees outside of the DOT right of way on the site to, to get the the plan to you know be more proximate with your landscaping requirements. Uh, the question then is whether you want to also, in addition to that, uh, push for some level of green island in, in front of the property in in the DOT right of way. So I'd like to see that. Well, can yeah, well, can but my question to the commission is, can you dictate uh, Grass Island that's on property that's not owned by the owner of this property? I could see, you know, working out some landscaping on the, the sides. Don't, don't you have to go to the DOT for this site? We went to the DOT in the past and got approval for the past and, and we, I could see going back saying, hey, we made some changes and this is, but I don't anticipate any, any flack from, from them in their review. Again, the. You can ask if they can, you could plant some shrubbery out front. So, so but, let's clarify what he just said, right? I, I think, I think you just said you went there with the island and they didn't have any problem, which is what I would, I would expect DOT wouldn't have a problem with a, a land, a grass, a grass island offering delineation along the frontage. They already have a curb. Um, would they want you to plant an oak tree in there? No. No, right. I don't need an oak tree. But and, shrub. Right, right. So they would have some, so they would look at and probably offer some comments on what kind of shrubbery you were going to put in there. But they, if, if there was a grass island being proposed, yeah. there would be no comment whatsoever. Yeah, and that's what I'm asking. Did you go there with the grass island before? We, yeah, with the last the last application, yes. And, 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 and that was perfectly fine with that. It was. Right. So was. If, we, if we want green space, don't, you know, we can worry about landscaping it afterwards, but a grass island in the front for, you know. But does the delivery problem doesn't cause concern to the commission about, you know, we got cars backing out of spaces and continuing and we've got a, you know, somebody making deliveries up in here so so we just we just approved a gas station across the street that's so darn tight and they take gas deliveries on a daily basis so you know i, I hear you but it's more of a desire than it is a hardship mm -hmm. okay. in my mind anyways right no i agree all right yeah i mean and i'd, I'd be satisfied with a Grass Island, if you know, rather than anything else. I mean, you just look at the aerial, and that's what it looks like. It won't. Pretty much anywhere else. Right. If DOT says no, then the Grass Island's fine. But otherwise, it's our side. All right. So this is not a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak on this? Just to ask. Okay. So it's just us and us and you. So. Uh, <laughs> Would somebody like to make a motion and try and, are there, were there other things in, um, before we go there, were there other things in Derek's comments that we really haven't touched upon? It's, no, I touched it's, on them. 
it's the parking parking in the you know whether it's pushed back on the side or not right which honestly I guess I guess I understand his comment but if we're going to get a grass island I'll bet he would pass on that because his purpose is primarily probably to save green space yes and the, and the previous plan had that exact parking uh, scenario uh, which was approved so okay um, and changing changing numbers so is there any other comment did you think needs to be you, your 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 motion to approve you know also has to include the waivers for landscaping there were some lighting uh, waivers and the stormwater management plan um, what makes it a little more difficult is that there were 15 conditions last time yeah so and I then think which probably to can, keep yeah I, I probably <laughs> should reference them all and then staff can work out but um, there's also there was also some uh, uh, it wasn't clear on the whether the existing asphalt, uh, m much of which is in a state of disrepair, was going to be repaired and or replaced. We couldn't tell from your notations, so uh, maybe you could speak uh, speak a little bit to that. No, we were not proposing to touch the existing other than making a saw cut to get a straight edge or a stronger edge because the edge of the pavements are usually torn up, broken. Um, and then pave just that triangular part as well as where the dumpster would be sitting. Yeah, some of it's in pretty rough uh, shape. So um, for what that's worth, um, you may be dealing with this, you know, sooner than later if, you, if he doesn't deal with it during the construction. So you want a condition in there? Well, I, 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 I probably, you know, the condition should be, uh, you know, with, with consultation with the town engineer, I, I'm not saying all of it needs it, but there's aspects of it that need some, need some, you know, basic maintenance. Okay. Would Would anybody like to propose a motion that uh, maybe we can all build on collectively? Rich. <laughs> Well, I just I suspect we can go down and make a general reference and then let um, kind of hit each topic. Well, this is this just to amend that prior application. It's not a new one, right? Yeah, right. Site right. plan, site plan revision, basically. Right. right. So. Can I technically make a motion? And I'm, and I'm, I'm yeah. not sure that, that even if we. Uh, what application are you using? Even if we uh, approve his application, that you know the conditions that were imposed uh, in September of 2017. Uh, and articulated in um, Peter's letter of October 5th that those conditions would need to be changed because the one that we're really kind of discussing is the issue of the landscaping and it does state that the applicant will, will shall work with town staff on an appropriate landscape plan uh, combined with the elimination of the excess asphalt curbing <coughs> In the state ROW, um, that seems to provide the staff, you know, the the flexibility to to uh, you know to work with this applicant in terms of you know the modification uh, that he's he's proposing, uh, and yet still um, have the authority to uh, you know impose conditions or limitations in the application of that condition yeah. uh, with the applicant. Okay, Okay. so let's, let's try this motion. I'm gonna make a motion to approve the revision to application, what do we have, 1956-17-Z, all right? Um, and, the, and the revised plans that were made um, with that revision. The previous conditions providing waivers for landscaping, lighting, and stormwater will still apply. 
portions of the existing asphalt pavement should be, um, to be repaired or replaced in consultation with town staff. Uh, a final landscape plan will be submitted uh, for town staff approval with the presumption that the landscaping to be provided is on the property owner's property and not necessarily expecting it to be on the state property. And, and that there's going to be a requirement for a grass island along the Berlin Turnpike frontage, approximately the width of the town, excuse me, the state's right of way. But the final dimensions can be coordinated with town staff. And then the 15 conditions that are applicable to the original applications still stand but as amended by or as follows all right this is where i want you to help me um probably one still applies two probably applies one is i have a restated one actually um generally they have to do with signing and markings on the pavement, which would be difficult if there is no pavement. <laughs> um, I don't know if six still applies, but we can leave that. That's the spot grading. MS4 will still apply. Anybody see anything that creates a problem just leaving it alone? Add a note. Must be that everything in the Berlin Turk Pike must be approved by DOT, that's obvious. We probably didn't need that in the first place. Um, providing the start and stop dates, that's not a problem. I don't see anything that jumps out at me as being a problem, just no, I mean, allowing it, it them either, all to stay. It either continues to apply, it has been satisfied, or it is modified by what you've said. Okay. Peter did mention the waivers. So. I think those are included in the original conditions and they get carried over, right. Mm -hmm. All right. So and I, and second. I, I guess the only additional thing would be to satisfy the town engineer's request for charts and graphs showing square feet and square yards. Thank you. Item, his item two, right? Two, yeah. Right, okay. All right. It's the applicant so indicated that they plan to do Anyway, so. Right, right. So did I hear a second just for discussion? I'll second. second. Okay. I'll second, I'll second, I'll second pick, pick the length of those. Dan Tony. Pick, pick, pick <laughs> a name. Yeah. All right, so, you know, just to kind of summarize what I'm, what, what I put forth, I think, is really just the island and, and work on the landscaping like we were going to do before. Don't necessarily have to put it in the state right away, but if, you know, they propose a couple bushes and DOT is acceptable with it, fine. But basically a grass island in the front. The parking that they've proposed revision is going to be, is going to stand, right? They turn the parking around and face the building and push it farther back. Um, but that's pretty much it, right? Yep. Really just yeah. a grass right. island. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Fine. Right, that's all for me. Okay. It's a start. We have uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that moves us on to other business, a free application review. Is there somebody here from 24 Maple or are we just discussing it? Have you got it down? You introduce yourself and go through it? Yeah. Um, for the record, I'm Russell Heinz. I'm a surveyor. I'm the principal with a surveying and engineering firm of Tarbell and Heinz who created this plan. Um, I guess we were back here three, four months ago for um, 
approval of the um, landscaping, or not landscaping, but the cease and desist order that you gave, or the town gave Mr. Sulo, the owner of the property who was with me tonight. Um, and then we had a discussion with the staff a couple weeks ago, and basically what the narrative says is what Joe would like to do with this property in phases, but um, it's number <laughs> one, we got a couple issues that we have to go through, and I guess I could So, as we said, Joe's fixing up 24 Maple, the building. So we haven't seen it, right? So just for clarification, we haven't seen it, so. Could you take that, the easel, just kind of point it over yeah. a little bit more? Fine, ah, thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. Can't see the applicant, but sure. that's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the picture of him up there, too. And, and I, I throw that at you just, you know, not, not specifically to correct you, but if it, don't leave anything out because I, I don't. Because we, it wasn't us. So this commission us. has not seen this plan, probably doesn't know yet the details of what Joe's doing to the existing building. So you may want to, I think you, you went to HDC and I think maybe the Wetlands Commission right. has been involved. This commission oh, uh, is okay. ground zero right now. So. Okay, I don't know, Joe, you want to explain? How did we get the variance for the, for the front? ZBA. So every other commission that we have, other, one other than this commission, has seen this. So, okay. yeah, yeah. That was the plan to get you to hit every one of us. Right. So you say ZBA, but I was. Didn't you tell me that this commission would give us the zoning variant or the variance? Yeah. This, this commission can grant you some relief okay. from some of the regulations, okay. but um, they have not seen this yet. Okay. So. so do you want to explain to them what you're doing with the building first? <laughs> My name is Joe Sulo. I am from uh, West Hartford, Connecticut, and I have a restaurant supply business. And I bought 24 Maple Street, and we're going to build a fulfillment center for my restaurant supply business, which we're working on now, which we're probably a couple months away from completing. In the process, there was a lot of there was woods on the side. So I bought two houses because I couldn't get any access to the building. There's a big building in the back that really had no access to it. So I bought, I bought the two houses. I cleared the lot, which I needed permission to do, but I didn't get permission to do before I cleared the lot. And we're trying to fix everything right now. And then I want to build a restaurant in the front corner. So yeah, OK. The other thing. Joe had one, so he bought the, obviously 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue. Um, he's got permission to tear, I believe he got yeah, permission. Was, uh, yeah. Historic District Commission granted right. them approval to demolish the houses, yes. And the reason we may or may not have to demolish them is <coughs> if, when we get our flood elevations straightened out, we may have to, if we build that restaurant, that's in a flood zone based on the flood maps. Based on elevation, it doesn't look like it, but the flood map show it there. And if we have to do what they call compensatory storage, we, we may have to tear down both those buildings on 159. And in doing that, we got to get permission to put that parking lot on 165 and 159, and that's not allowed in that zone. So we need a zone change, and we want to combine both those lots to 24 Maple. What do you mean by a fulfillment center? You mean like people coming there or trucking? No, no, we're, or we're, we're, on? Like we, I sell on the web. So okay. all my stuff is, you know, we get orders, they come on a website, and then we box the stuff up and ship it out. Okay. So it's really no, it's not open to the public. Prepared foods or? No, no, restaurants. Restaurant supplies. supplies. Yeah. Okay. Like pots, pans, spoons, coolers, freezers. Okay. So it's all, it's all truck. Loading trucks. So and loading trucks. Inside. Basically, it was a fulfillment center for food bag. We're doing the yeah. same type operation. Oh, is that right? Theirs yeah. was food. Ours is like restaurant equipment. Okay. Thank you. You, you are or you aren't buying the two houses? I already bought them. And you're going to tear them down? I, am I all, we trying to figure out <laughs> that we need to tear them down or don't need to tear them down. But to do all of this, we had to go to the historic district and get permission. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for sure we have to tear down one. Can I say something that bothers me when I go down there and when 
I go through that whole intersection a lot. Yeah. And uh, last year, up to last year, my wife was over at Salmon Brook and Glastonbury, so I commute her daily down through this area. And a lot of people do here in this town. Uh, that location out front is a jam-packed part of the day, and it's very difficult to left turn into the side of the speed. Uh, gets jammed up back over the tracks and down to Middletown Ave. And yet, you want to move this restaurant out in front of the 50 foot line. You don't want to, you want to move it out 25 feet back. I don't understand some of this kind of thing. Well, it used to. Let me put it oh. bluntly. I have to sometimes think and lecture as a planner from years ago that, you know, setbacks and yards were not to make pretty front yards. But the original concept of them was for highway widening. Now, what happens if this whole intersection gets so jammed up that DOT wants to somehow come in and maybe widen slightly in that area? And this bringing this out in this day and age doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I like to see the restaurant set back a little bit more. You can't do it on the existing building, but I know you have a, an overhead structure now in the front that sticks out, but I, I assume that's for the, the 20, back behind the 25 feet there, right? Or is it 18? Um, no, I think it's 25. It is. However, however, that zone prior to changing it to the business zone was 25 oh, yeah. foot setbacks. And, yeah. and the reason we kind of need that, because you put it back 50 feet in both directions, it just it won't doesn't, work. won't fit. Uh, uh, are you thinking of your main entrance for the restaurant being Middletown Ave or the front? No, main entrance will be on uh, Southerly. On, on Naples? Yep. Well, entrance to, to walk into the restaurant is here. Oh, okay. okay. You, obviously, you can come in on both for street wise access. You can come in both You'd ways. come in down here next to the first house and yep. right there. Which is already an existing curb cut. Or somewhere, you know, yeah. along there, going to have the entrance. Yeah. Well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay. so I'm uh, just going to offer that we all re remember that this is a pre-application review, right? They're looking for input on certain items, and Peter was kind enough to summarize that on the second page of his memo. First and foremost is his own change. The applicant has, in fact, bought two properties, uh, 60, 165, <coughs> 159. They are in the wrong zone to be used for this development. So if he needs to take them down, and, and maybe even regardless of whether he needs to take them down, he may change the zone anyways, but there would be a proposal to do a zone change, including those two parcels, move the zone line. Um, where else? It, on, on the surface, Peter, that doesn't look like it creates any weird looking lines. I don't know what it does on the other side. Actually, the zoning line that exists today is quite unusual. Um, it's hard to tell from this graphic, but the those two residential homes, those are relatively deep lots. The property lines go all the way up to the building itself almost, literally a couple of feet off. So it's like less than 15 feet from the yeah. building out. Yeah. So, uh, so, I, so I don't know how that zone anything. line got created in the first place without actually incorporating the two homes, but never, <clears throat> nevertheless, it makes the access to the building in the back uh, pretty impossible without and we don't allow parking for a commercial use in a residential zone. then therefore the reason to to, to rezone it so <coughs> that's the issue with the with the zoning it's basically to support the commercial use of the uh, property and this plan um, potentially could keep the houses but obviously that's up to the the developer <clears throat> in terms of whether he wants to do that. This plan theoretically um, possibly could keep the houses, but I think by the time you do the grading and everything, it's it's probably not the, the best plan. Get rid of them. I feel that way. Okay. I think, if uh, it's going to be a development, it's going to go in there. It's going to be approval. I think that it's okay. probably beneficial to have those those homes removed. Okay. So that's that's the kind of feedback that the applicant is looking for. So uh, they, they might like because of what I said, they might like to actually have the entrances and they actually are facing the entrance for the restaurant out back, sort of, you know, with parking it. And that makes sense to me. And using more Middletown Ave than 
than trying to get people to cross lanes and stuff out front there when it gets congested. Well, you know, I mean, that's my thing. The, the and, and also, you got to remember that we have more congestion in this area coming. I'm going to talk to the planner here. We have a big, you know, the, the big building going in down on Mill Street. And a lot of those people are going to be coming out of Mill Street, up Middletown Ave, and out to the highway. So Middletown Ave is going to get even more busy in the future with more development in this whole area. So Which is you're just part of it. And I'm glad to see it. It's really just a big apartment building. If yeah. You're, if you're no, I know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Middletown is three lanes on the bottom of that page, right? Two, two coming out, one going in. What's what's Route Three? In front of the in front of the um, restaurant, how many lanes it's, across? Well, it's four lanes. It's two. It's two, two and two. two, two, and two. two. Right. There's no there's no left turn into spring spring. No, there is. There. Yeah, there is. There's a, probably a left going north. It's it's four, I understand it's four <coughs> lanes going toward the highway, but right in front of the restaurant, are are there five lanes across there? I believe there is a left turn lane onto onto Spring Street if you're heading towards Glastonbury. You're right. Turn lane yeah. Lane, so there's yep. five lanes. Yeah, there are five lanes. Five. Yeah. So, so five lanes holds a whole lot of traffic. It's not going to get any bigger anytime soon. Right? That's that's why I was asking the question. Okay. Yeah, and someday people may yeah, be able to use Middletown Avenue, Avenue again. Again, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Sure. Someday. We're talking about okay. the backups around by the tracks and from the tracks up to the Silas Dean. It, yeah. It's been more busy now since Middletown Avenue is yeah. closed, which when Middletown Avenue was a lot <coughs> less. It's not going to be as busy. Right. So, so George, you, George, you had mentioned the 25. You're building up, though, you're going to be busy back in Middletown. Yeah, go ahead. You had mentioned the 25-foot setback on the building on the corner. Yeah. Every zone in town is 25 feet except for this one. Okay, thank you. I don't know why that is, but um, it's the only, uh, every, everything else is 25. This is 50 for some reason, which we discovered as the plan was being laid out. So, so they're at, they would be asking for 25 uh, uh, like other, other conventional. Actually, they, they exceed the 25 depending on whether the patio goes in, but the building is even behind that. So. Right. Um, but that was something they wanted some it guidance makes me on. Feel better though that the main entrance may not necessarily be on out front. <coughs> it may be more on Middletown Avenue and back. Is what I'm trying to suggest. Wait, when That's you say main entrance, thing. just just the walking into the place, not driving. It's not driveways. Well, they, they don't park out front. They're not going to park out back and then walk all the way around. Oh, of course not. No, no. no. Ridiculous. no. Yeah. But, but keep in mind what Peter's talking about is discussion item number six. I hadn't even gotten down there. So the 25 foot is actually going to be something that we would okay, have to I waive. That, Mr. Chairman. Yes. That's the point he's making. I didn't realize that. So if that really bothers somebody, the existing structure is, you know, 28 feet off right up the road. Um, and the other thing. or minus 82 spaces are needed for, for the restaurant. And between these, this park and 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 56 spaces. So we would have to <coughs> park. Plus you're talking about the two houses. So you might put something even a little more expansive back there. I don't know. That's Maybe. That's you need a to. possibility. Plus, we could have the employees park in the back of the building yeah, over here, which is plenty. Thing. There's plenty employees of employees can park yeah. in the back. If the employees park in the back, right. there's more public parking in the front. I guess my question on on those two points is just as a point of reference, what what kind of restaurant is six thousand square feet? Yeah. And you know, not necessarily names, but like what kind? I, I own a and, business in Manchester, Connecticut, Artisanal Burger Company. I don't yep. know if anybody been over there, yeah. but that's the same thing I'm going to put here. Okay. So, um, and and the not not conflicting in the hours, um, you know, what are the hours of the fulfillment center versus the hours of the, the restaurant? The fulfillment center basically where we're it's eight to five business, mm -hmm. and there might be two three employees that might stay till seven eight o'clock at night. 
but they'll I'm gonna have the employee park it in the back but how on many the, back? how many you mean over the, on the south end so this, this here is where the employees are going to park this is going to be the entrance okay. This entrance here is just going to be if we get a visitor or a veteran <coughs> comes in. Because we're real there might be one or two cars parked here over the course of the day. How many employees do you anticipate? Probably about 30. Okay. And the parking requirements for that are based on square footage of the warehouse? Yeah, it's, so it's a very low, even though the significant size of the building, I, I, it's a fraction per thousand. It's, it's a small number. You, right. you didn't okay. count them spaces in there, right? For the, you didn't count them spaces in the back either with no, the 82. I think there was charts. Yeah, but that would require me to unfold it. So. <laughs> Why is this? Well, it's all stapled together. I'm glad to see somebody doing something with this area. I thought it was no use when it lasted the Warehouse three spaces provided. I don't think a lot of people saw how big the building was. Yeah, till all I'm the trees were, when were I went back. It was very, very surprising big? because you drive by and you don't mm -hmm. realize. Then, um, you know, Britain Candy was there for years and you know, it, it was all wholesale, you know, it yeah. wasn't retail, so you wouldn't be, you have no reason to be in there. Yeah, but we're, we're not, we're, we're wholesale too, basically. No, I understand retail, that. But it's but the same. No yeah, you don't really drove in there. And and be honest with you, before I looked at the building, I never realized that it went beyond where the trees and the houses were. No one really see, you couldn't see it. No, I I drove through it today, and, yeah. and it was for the first time that I really drove through the entire yeah. town. Yeah, it's big. big. Yeah. So so you forgive. Know, I'm, I'm glad to see, go ahead. Rich, you were saying something. No, I wasn't saying. So help me understand um, the size. Uh, I'm I'm having a hard time picturing what six thousand square foot is. That is that chips or is chips probably bigger than that, right? So this is roughly roughly the size of a chip. Of so a it's chip? like a Chili's, like a Chili's, a Chili's or a Friday's okay. Okay. type type size place. Gotcha. Thank you. Go ahead, George, if you were gonna. No, I I'm just pleased to see industry, and I consider this industry. Have we approved an industrial site in this town in the last twenty years? Uh, not since I've been here. No, and it goes way back. I'm glad to see it here, yeah. what you're presenting. All right. And using up a site that <coughs> is a good location. I mean, you're right yeah. off 91. You can't be any better in yeah. this town. So, um, so the other items, stormwater management, uh, you know, um, less. Work that out with staff. Yep. Yes, exactly, right? Um, landscape buffer requirements and landscape requirements, generally speaking. Yeah, so there are some homes there that would have to, and, and the plan incorporates, you can see on there, some preliminary landscaping, so we would work out that detail as well. And I have to work that out with the historic district, too, right. because they wanted to be involved, and in, even with the restaurant, like I told them exactly, they want to be involved in what we do. Believe it or not, this is in the historic district, George, just so you know. The whole thing? The whole below thing. The, below yeah, the railroad track. Yeah. 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 Tracks. Yes. What's, what's it do with landscaping now? You gotta, you There's a landscaping be, buffer required to the for the homes the there. Put the landscaping in there. Well, we, this is, I'm this kidding. This right but, here was all yeah. part of the uh, Cisco order, so we got this approved already. <coughs> From the historic district approved that. Oh. So the retaining wall and oh, they want they want the houses? No, no, they don't want them. They got permission to tear them down. Oh, oh, oh okay. They think they should be torn down as well as you. Good. I just hope the neighbors feel that way. So, so the general. Oh, it's already approved. Oh, it is. The oh, tear it down. Maybe the wrong stage, but will there be lighting in the parking lot? Yes. Okay. On the plans. So, so there will be waivers required for the landscaping. Maybe more. Maybe several of them. Right. Perimeter, buffer. At the, at the time of application, that will all be specified, so we'll, we'll deal with that at the, at the application time. But it's likely there will be. If you're familiar with the site, but this whole frontage on Middletown Road is all cut that wet pine. Yeah. I mean, they've been there for years. Yeah, they're way overgrown. Yeah. Chop them down and put, yeah. some, put something new up. Right. Yeah. They, they will fall apart. You know, it, it shrouds the whole whole site. That's why you don't yeah. think there's anything there. You only see the building, but it's down. Yeah, it's good to keep it. I don't like this one. 
So does anybody, so with those topics, does anybody see a significant problem that they want to further address with the applicant? <coughs> the, only, the only th thing that I can mention is uh, it, it may be a good idea uh, to talk to some of the neighbors, um, you know, on, on Middletown Avenue so that it's not, uh, you know, when it comes in, it's not a, a culture shock. It's but they, they when they had the historic meeting, there, a bunch of them showed up, wanted to know what was going on. They there. did? Yes. Okay. And then after the second meeting, no one showed up. They wanted to, we explained everything okay, that was going good. on. Is yeah. there a crosswalk over yeah. to the office building? Yeah. On the across the street? Yes. yes. I'm just thinking for traffic for the restaurant. That'd be an obvious place for a walk. Uh, yeah, where we're the, there's a sidewalk, and there's I don't think there's a sign where it's like you know like a, one of the blinking signs where you okay, crosswalk. I just, I just wondered. Yeah, I no, I don't, my, I don't know. I can remember my head. But there is there's sidewalk there, and there's sidewalk on the other side. <coughs> it's just a hundred feet of speeding traffic in yeah. between them. Okay. All right. Anything else for this applicant? For a future applicant? When you're coming in. <laughs> I don't mean tonight. What's your next move? Your well, the next move historic? is basically, to, if you would, somebody said no, no um, restaurant, well, then we would probably not come in fast. But one of the reasons we want to do this is we want to try to do it in phases. We come here for approval for, first thing is, he needs So you need the zone change. You need the zone change. So we need that yeah. zone change. And then basically show this. Um, we're not, we're Where, really where's the edge of the zone it. now? At the northern end of the proposed parking? Basically where's the, the zone line goes right, right through here. there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It, it, my intention is to build a restaurant, say, starting a year from today. So I need to get the lot done over here. This approved. The house is knocked down, finished. Why, why, why don't we see a zone change request tonight in front of us? Because they didn't submit one, George. <laughs> There's no application. This is a pre-application. I know what it is. Hey, none of that. So, <clears throat> so you're, you need to construct the uh, Middletown Avenue access point too, right? Well, that's and the driveway. It's already there. It's existing it's existing. Okay. And we're not changing the curb cut. That line can be evasive sometimes. Yes. How do you, where are you going to comp compensate? Any idea? I mean, where are you going to fill? Well, uh, we, the do, hole. we do right <laughs> empty. empty <laughs> where you got to dig it and then fill it. An in ground pool. Is exactly. Exactly. Yeah, whatever. It's a big piece. But how much, how far are you going to dig down there? Are you going to, if you fill. You got to raise that about four you feet. You got to dig out somewhere else, right? Yeah. Go, go down and uh, dig up some of the stuff down there being dumped down on uh, Elm Street that we've been a big complaint about here tonight. <laughs> that might help. So, so to kind of summarize, it doesn't seem like you're going to have a big headwind for a zone change, um, no, right? Not. And uh, nobody's running scared with what you're proposing, right? So for, right, that's the first what thing. For it. Yeah. Okay. You all set from us what you can get? At this well, point, without a formal application of some sort? We weren't happy with this. We have to come back and think about it. But okay. It seems that we'll go forward. I hope okay. we can. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so I probably could have done this during other business and, and had a whole audience of people, but. We have a star amongst us, Tony Homicki finished 12 years of rather spotty, thank you if I was looking for a good word. <laughs> Tom had a plug. Thank you, Tom. That's you came, right? I didn't think you guys would make it. Wow. That's funny.
Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Uh, we must be at, on to the minute somewhere. Tom, Tom got his, and Jim got one as well. And Rich got a Lifetime, lifetime achievement. achievement Award. And a very long discussion of his accomplishments. It was yes. pretty impressive. I sat there going, holy crap, he, he sits amongst us. Uh, usually people say they walk among us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what else? Are there other issues before we get to the minutes? Let's just do the minutes. Who is here? Is there a motion on the minutes? Minutes, so moved. What? No corrections, George? Two corrections. You sure they're perfect? No, because I only read the page I'll 13, second. but they were very good. I'll second the motion. I'm sure they were perfect. All righty. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Let's see. Should anybody not be voting? Dan, Dan, Dan should not be voting. And Joe, right? So there's six approvers? Okay, good, perfect. What else, Any uh, anything else? Just one, uh, one topic uh, to bring to your attention, or maybe there's another topic, but uh, in any event, um, the topic of air, Airbnbs, air bed and breakfast has come up. Um, there, are, there are a couple in town that we are aware of. Um, we're without a we're without a zoning officer right now, so it, it we're not actively uh, doing anything about it. Um, or the, I guess the question is, or does anyone feel strongly that we should? We don't have uh, some towns have regulations, some towns do not, and have no issue with them. I don't know if everyone is familiar with what an Airbnb is, but in essence, it's um, the rental of a private home or apartment. Uh, to uh, folks on a somewhat um, on a transient basis, um, some town it has been a topic in various communities. Some towns uh, have adopted regulations; others treat them like a conventional bed and breakfast. I'm not sure how they do that, but uh, and then others, um, as they say, either regulate them, treat them as a B and B, or don't have any issue with them as is. Um, we have some regulations that actually allow single-family homes, people to rent rooms in their homes, um, I think, it, yeah, administratively. So that puts a wrinkle on, on how we would handle these kinds of things. But it's not really the rental of a room. It's the rental, in most cases, of a, of a home or an apartment. You have access to the kitchen, the bathrooms, and all of the facilities that uh, the home consists of. So... Um, so, so the question, uh, we, we've gotten some complaints uh, that there are a couple in town. We've actually had an inquiry from somebody wanting to know if they wanted to do that will give us some guidance. So we haven't really taken a strong position either way because it's not a hot topic. There aren't a lot of them. I think they're, you know, they're, they're probably more than three, but I know of three. Um, you know, it's not, so some, some communities, um, that are attractive for vacation, you know, shoreline, mountains, that kind of thing. They have become problems. Uh, I don't. It's not. We're not a com comparative community to those. So, um, I wanted to throw the topic uh, out there and get some some guidance. Um, and then, uh, when the new zoning officer, whenever that person comes on board, we, we can we can talk and give them uh, some guidance on how to how to deal with this on the on the other side of that. So. So I, I guess I'm a little surprised that we don't have more given historic weather field, but um, this is not a new topic. We've discussed this before. Can you remind me? I, I couldn't where remember. We left it? Yeah, I, I can't remember. It, it came up uh, before. I can't recall the context. Um, and I went back and tried to find when we discussed it at one of these meetings, and I, I couldn't. It must not have even been. You know, it might have been one of these conversations at the end of the meeting. So you keep talking, Rich will find it in a minute somewhere else. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I think it was probably two years ago because <coughs> I think somebody came and talked about how horrible Airbnbs were at the AquaTurf dinner. Right. And they were from the Hotel Association. Right, okay. Or it was a, maybe a Casio meeting, too, that yeah, might I mean, have been and, a speaker. And, yep. and I know that it is an issue in some of the towns we do work for along the shoreline and in Litchfield County and you know, 
frankly, I mean, the, actually, the, the question I had for you was whether this was drawn to your attention by complaints and whether the complaints were kind of legitimate as opposed to, you know, just ratting out your neighbor and then, you know, how, how we would want to deal with it. Because if it's, if it's just, you know, this is going on next door, it's like, well, the, I think we all know things that are going on that, you know, may not be entirely consistent with our zoning regulations, but don't rise to the level of, you know, needing to change the regulations or become an enforcement to priority. Put regulations in on these. I'd rather not. Yeah. So, so I, I, there's we have some language within the regulations that refers to the renting to you know non-family members and things like that in the regulations. So I think it kind of opens the door. It's not a big issue. We actually, I got a complaint this evening, an email complaint that referenced three listings in the community, uh, and it's a person who has you know filed complaints about other things in the past so um, I don't think it's a neighbor thing because there's three of them um, I think it's just a, gen a general complaint I, I don't see them as a big this is a big issue and you know with George's guidance about not making a big deal out of them um, until it becomes a problem um, you know I've got a situation where my my mother they have they you know they go to Florida but they're up in New Hampshire. They rent their house on occasion to people skiing, that kind of thing. They make a little income. People come and go. Um, nobody would even know that we somebody else is in the house. If there's noise or they're obnoxious, the police get involved, right? And that kind of stuff. There are the normal, you know, methods where the police could get involved. But this, and you look at the listings that are in town. They do have provisions like that about no guests, no parties you know that within the listing whether you know they enforce that is, is another issue but the ones that we do have have sort of you know protective measures at least in the listing available so um, but I wanted to bring it to your attention in case somebody feels very strongly that we should ramp this up to another and create something and or and or prohibit them uh, if if that's even you know an option as well when I, uh, before I retired from the city of New Haven, uh, my department was uh, investigating uh, the issue of Airbnbs because there were apparently uh, several hundred that were listed for New Haven in the Airbnb listing on the web. And the issue with New Haven wasn't so much violating zoning regulations or any of the things that have been discussed here, but it was the loss of revenues to the town or to the city as a consequence of not collecting, uh, like the, essentially the hotel tax. And, and yeah. you know, depending upon how significant that may be as a revenue source for Weathersfield or n not an issue, I think that would be my primary concern for <coughs> our involvement. If it's just three or four in town uh, that are doing it kind of on a spotty basis and, you know, uh, Providing a little additional income for you know private uh, uh, oh, homeowner, uh, I, I don't consider that a big issue. But on the other hand, if it becomes <coughs> an actual, you know, essentially an industry within Weathersfield, then I think it's given you know the the situation of our our you know our tax revenue problem, uh, it could be an issue. And Weathersfield is you know is or had does have the potential of being a very you know, tourist-oriented uh, town for the city, particularly, you know, for those that are interested in, you know, American history. Right. So I, I remember the conversations now, and you're right, it was at the, you know, the annual meeting that there was a long, long dialogue, and the complaints were coming from the uh, hotel industry that was having basically complaints about unfair, you know, unfair competition because they didn't have to pay all those taxes, right? And the hotels obviously do. <clears throat> and so it was, to, you know, cutting into their income. Um, I, so I, I think it sounds like there's many here who don't think it's a big deal. Uh, on the <coughs> other hand, if someone were to make a complaint, could we call them compliant? And are we stuck if we don't address it somehow, even if it's in some small, measurable, approvable way? Yeah, I, I have to, I probably spend a little bit more time thinking about, um, you know, the pros and cons, whether it's technically a violation or whether it isn't. Um, you know, the term transient, 
comes into play in in some of our regulations. So I'd have to probably look at that, uh, and I will. I, I just have it as I say, it came up today, and since we had a meeting, I wanted to get some, you know, get a lay of the land, get get your temperature about this. So um, you know, I'll spend a little bit more time um, thinking about it, and we can talk about it at another meeting. I haven't even looked at what other towns are doing, uh, you know, nearby. So um, that would probably come into play as well. <clears throat> I, I attended a bar association thing within the last six months where they talked about it as well. And I guess my, my thought is first, I don't think it's a problem here. I question whether it will ever be. Um, but if it were to become one, then I think we'd be in a more informed position to try to know what the problem is that we're dealing with and also watch what other towns who are spending lots of resources are doing to figure it all out. And I think if we attempted to do something now, we could be having the opposite effect unintentionally based on trying to craft something that's uncharted ground. So honestly, I was hoping the two of you would talk up because you know, I'm just I'm just coming from a viewpoint of are we exposed? And if you're suggesting we're not really exposed, let's not worry about it. Right. I think if, I tend if, to agree. I, again, I think I if a problem imagine. develops, we always have the ability to enact a regulation at yeah. that point in time. Is a bed yeah, and the breakfast considered is a good. home industry or home? Is a bed and breakfast considered a home? We have a separate industry? category for bed and breakfast and a specific uh, definition. I'm saying that if I say someone does a bed and breakfast and they're having people there three days a week, doesn't it automatically kick in being a home business? No, it's a bed and breakfast. It's a different category than a home occupation. They don't need to. There are much more uh, stringent standards for a bed and breakfast than a home occupation, so that kicks in into an even more stringent um, requirement. You know, it's based on how many we have maximum number of rooms. You need licensing from the health department. There's food involved, and so it's um, th this is not these are not that these are typically someone renting an apartment or their house when they're not around no. and making it available to these people um, for a short period of time to make a little bit of extra. Revenue. They don't provide them. They don't cook for them. They don't. They let them have the, the run of their home in in almost all cases. I'm familiar with a couple of towns that just don't allow it. Period. And uh, some of them are wealthier. New Jersey, Connecticut towns, and Litchfield County, Fairfield County. Um, and I'm also familiar that recently some appeals have happened with neighbors saying that there's a negative effect on the market values. They haven't progressed anything I've heard of litigation but it has raised the flag for the assessment practices in the board of appeals but uh, any any case law on those things? not that i'm familiar uh, with i don't think anybody's really pursued it that well values? it's been an internal issue yeah. in the towns Just that i talked to in the workshops that i've been to right. but it's interesting they, and i've rented a couple already and they're quite restrictive in some of the terminology and the language you know hours of use number of cars in the driveways yeah. um, they almost self-regulate they really do they really do or keep it up Keep, keep the neighbors from complaining. Yeah, because I mean, the, as a practical matter, the person that's renting it out doesn't want to, you know, spoil it by having, yeah, you know, well, the bad the users that complaint. cut off their income supply exactly. and wreck their house. Yeah. yeah. And also, as a practical matter, you know, our enforcement, you know, the town's enforcement capabilities are are quite mm -hmm. limited, you know, due to the town's finances and, you know. The, as a consequence, I don't think there's any real risk, you know, if we, you know, just uh, adopt a watch and see attitude, you know, to this issue. It seems like the only way that it would come to our attention is that if the, the activity created some other kind of violation that people would know about, like, yeah. you know, parking on the lawns or, yeah. Anything special about the upcoming public hearings? We have anything else to, that we wanted to bring up? No. Um, you do have. We did get the uh, an application uh, for uh, medical marijuana dispensary that is going to be pushed out to the first meeting in May, I think. Um, so the next agenda uh, will be uh, pretty light. Um, so you will have a pre-application uh, at your next meeting f just came in today for um, what they're jokingly referring to as the Borden 2, T-O-O -O or 2, depending on how you want to 
look at it, but um, the developer of the Borden is in the process of purchasing the office building at the corner and uh, will be presenting uh, preliminary plans for what he wants to do with that building. So the office building, the office building with the professionals that we talked about. That's correct. The millennium the parking and all that. That's correct. So that will be on for pre-application at your next meeting. Okay. Okay. Can I have a motion? One, excuse me, just one quick thing. Good try, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anyone has a chance before the leaves come out on the trees to take a drive on Tollgate and compare the height of the apartment buildings behind the houses on Tollgate to what we were shown on the renderings, you might be surprised. I mean, they, they just strike me as vastly larger than... The existing versus the what renderings? What is, yeah, what, what's there? What is there now compared to, you know, the kind of little house on the prairie, tiny buildings on the far horizon? Um, it's kind of eye opening. And that building is pretty much framed for what you're going to experience. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so if you haven't been out there, you, sh you probably should. Yeah. Uh, the Ridge Road, two two seventy five Ridge Road, the apartment. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. <clears throat> no, what I was saying is drive on Tollgate to see what it looks like it looks, behind those. Looks larger and taller. Yeah, it's on yeah. The highway. Larger, taller, and closer. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> I wanted to show you those images. I can show you. Can you Artistic license. Yeah, oh yeah. I guess you know. I want to believe that it's hard to. It's hard to visualize, but it's, it's easy to show, you know, a triangular section or a sight line, right? But um, the reality is that the sight line that you're seeing on Tollgate is much farther away. You know, it's, it's kind of like, can you see that on-air sign when you're, when you're sitting at the, the, on the back row? And the answer is no, right? Right. And all you got to do is move 20 feet this way and it's clear as day, right? And so that's the perspective that you're seeing from Tollgate versus what they showed us, which is backyard views of all those property owners, right? right? And they're right up next to the wall, so you can't see the on-air sign. What about a zoning enforcement officer? When are they coming aboard? Uh, to George, that is a good question, uh, which I do not have an answer for. Tom's retired. He can... Oh. <laughs> Are you? That'd Would you like fun. to do that? No. no. The thankless job. You didn't apply for the job? No. <laughs> All right. I heard a motion. Second. Thank you. All aye. those in favor say aye. 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 You didn't get the microphone. Quiet today. Quiet today. I don't have to keep any of this stuff. Call the property owner. 